What's up, guys? Welcome to Movie Importance Flashback Reviews, where we take movies from our past, break them down, tell you what we think about them. As always, if you like what you see, remember to rate, subscribe, check out the YouTube channel, Facebook, and Twitter, email and lapolo 113 agent if you have any questions. So we continue our quest for Avengers Endgame. We officially end Phase 2 with not Avengers of Age of Ultron, like I said, but with actually with Ant-Man, which is kind of interesting because this is a standalone movie that ends the whole phase leading up to Phase 3. And this movie is directed by Peyton Reed, which is very interesting because this is a movie that had been set up with Edgar Wright. Everybody was excited by that because Edgar Wright's an amazing director. And, of course, we know how all that went down with Edgar Wright getting really mad because they wanted it more, you know, in line with, you know, the MCU. And Edgar Wright wanted to do his own thing. But there are things in this movie that are very Edgar Wright-ish, you know, the jokes and stuff like that. But, like I said, this is directed by Peyton Reed. It brings in Paul Rudd as Scott Lang, so we get a new Avenger. Uh, it has Evangeline Lilly as Hope Van Dyne, who will eventually become the Wasp and Ant-Man and the Wasp. We have Corey Stoll, who's playing Darren Cross, the main bad guy, who ends up becoming Yellow Jacket. We have Michael Douglas, who plays Hank Pym, and he's like the original Ant-Man, and his wife, who eventually is being played by Michelle Pfeiffer. You know, Janet Van Dyne, she has disappeared, and he's been lying to his daughter, so on and so forth. But also in this movie is Michael Pena, who's playing Lewis, which is actually, I think, the standout of this movie, and everybody agrees, and you know why. Uh, T.I. and David uh, Dastamishian. Uh, play his uh, Lewis's like right hand man. You know they're they're part of the people, part of the crew that are originally like part of like a they steal things basically. They're a ty type of crew. Uh, Bobby Carnival and Judy Greer play the step parent slash parents of Scott Lang's daughter. Judy Greer and Scott Lang used to have a you know be married and so on and so forth before he went to jail. Uh, Anthony Mackie pops up as you know Falcon, the character he played in Captain America. And the Avengers, uh, Haley Atwell and John Slattery also pop up in this movie because, you know, this movie starts out in 1989 with the building of the shield building that ends up getting destroyed by, you know, Captain America and all that stuff and Captain America, the winter soldier. But it's nice to see Howard Stark and Peggy Carter come back in a smallish role at the very beginning of this movie. But this movie's pretty basic. It's a story about Scott Lang who has just been released from prison. He has to find a job. He wants to see his daughter. But, of course, the Bobby Carnival and Judy Greer characters won't let him see him because he doesn't have a job. You know, Bobby, Con Bobby Carnival plays a police officer, and there's just a lot of tension there. Well, being that he's an ex-con who was known for stealing stuff, he gets involved with Michael Pena, who's his, like, friend on the outside, and... They go to steal what they think is money in Hank Pym's house. And what they end up finding is the Ant-Man suit, the thing that makes people shrink. And so he gets involved with Hank Pym and Jan uh, Hope Van Dyne. And he learns about the fact that Darren Cross is trying to, is basically going to take over the Pym Industries and turn it into Cross Industries. But... Darren Cross wants the Ant-Man technology or the, you know, the shrinking technology to basically weaponize it and to create a thing called the Yellow Jacket, which will help turn the tide of war, which is not a bad idea. But Darren Cross is starting to go a little bit insane and he is on his way to basically becoming a supervillain, even though it's not a very interesting character. But the Yellow Jacket's a cool character. But so in the process... This movie becomes a heist movie because they have to steal the yellow jacket to stop Darren Cross. And, you know, so they start training and, you know, Scott Lang starts training to manipulate ants to help him take down the suit. And that's basically the, how the story plays out. You know, you get the idea of these characters just trying to steal a suit. And it's very simple. It's a phase one movie that, of course, takes place in phase two. And the reason this is a phase two movie is it's dealing with quantum realm stuff It's dealing with stuff that's going to affect the phase three universe up in Avengers Endgame most likely. And it's just, it's a movie that has a lot of moving parts, but doesn't do it in a super complex way. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in this movie that, you know, harkens back to what Iron Man was dealing with, with, you know, the building of the Iron Man suit. And I don't know, everybody in this movie is having a lot of fun. 
you know, Paul Rudd is Paul Rudd, so he's always going to be funny in the movie. Hope Van Dyne, Evangeline Lilly, I've always enjoyed. I've enjoyed since Lost. She's an amazing actress. She's fun. She has kind of a romantic interest to Scott Lang, but it's not really shown until near the end of the movie. I think Michael Douglas as Hank Pym is awesome because Michael Douglas is an awesome actor, and he does a really nice job with a guy who has a haunted past, and his daughter and himself don't get along because he doesn't want to tell her the truth about how Janet Van Dyne basically saved a war, a nuclear bomb from going off because she goes subatomic, which is a big part about, you know, it's kind of like when you don't cross the streams because it can create a, like a, a really bad scenario. This is the same way here where she went subatomic and she disappeared and Hank Pym can't find her. And she, uh, he gives a warning to Scott Lang. So, but you know, like I said, everybody in this movie is playing their part. Everybody in this movie is having fun. I think Paul Rudd was an amazing addition to this this movie but you can't really understate like the supporting characters michael pena's like storytelling about how to get they get to the point where they're going to steal the what is supposedly money is one of the most amazing things in the mcu it's just michael pena is just he's having some fun like talking to other people and you see the flashbacks of how everything plays out and it's done twice in the movie which is really fun and really just over the top and just to watch the characters, you know, mimic his voice and because he's telling the story is just, it's such a good moment. It's one, like I said, one of the best in the MCU. But, you know, Darren Cross, Corey Stoll, I like Corey Stoll. I think he's an, I think he's a talented actor, but he's just your typical villain. He's in the Malekith. He's in the Ronin, the Accuser. He just, he's a guy that wants to take over the world eventually and make money by doing it. And he's kind of like Obadiah Stane where he's going to sell off the property. And it's just not that really that much. It's not that exciting. And he's just not that exciting in the role. And when they do a full CGI yellow jacket in the house, you know, cause he, yellow jackets kidnapped uh, Scott Lang's daughter. That stuff's a lot of fun. The stuff with the Thomas, the tank engine is a lot of fun. The fact that, you know, they're fighting, and when you see it from a large person point of view, it looks like this really miniature battle, which is really, really funny. Um, this movie is not, like, the... It's not going to go down as the best MCU movie in the world, but it's a lot of fun. If you if you can get past the, the villain and the ridiculous subplots and, you know, the Falcon-Ant-Man fight is really fun, and if you can get real, real, like, get past the simplicity of what's going on here, it's not a bad movie. I really wish Judy Greer got more to do in this movie because she's a lot. She's a great actress that has been underutilized in everything she's ever been doing in film in general. And I think the only thing she's really ever been great in is Archer. But she she has a supporting role and she's whatever. But like I said, this movie hinges on Paul Rudd and Evangeline Lilly and their chemistry together, which I said works really well. But like I said, Paul Rudd plays a great character that really plays well in what he comes up with in Captain America Civil War and Ant-Man and the Wasp and eventually Avengers Endgame. He's just, he's always been one of my favorite actors to watch because he just, he has a dynamic, fun reality to him that just goes over the top. If you ever see I Love You, Man, definitely check that out. But like I said, this movie's fun. It's breezy. It's only like an hour and 57 minutes. So it's definitely worth your time if you haven't watched it yet. But that's it. There's not really much else to talk about. You know, there's some whatever moments, but like the stuff I highlight is what you should check out. But anyways, that's going to be my take on Ant-Man. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you like what you see, remember to rate, subscribe, check out the YouTube channel, Facebook, and Twitter. Email in lapolo 113 at gmail.com if you have any questions. So if you've rewatched this or if you watched it recently, tell me what you think compared to the first time you saw it. Like I said, I wasn't a big fan the first time I saw it, but I'm more, it's like, building on me it's more fun than i remember so but anyways that's gonna be it and we'll see you guys in the next video peace out